Welcome, everyone. Um, if you would please mute your mics, it will help reduce background noise. And I am very proud of what we, we will be showing you today for the benefit of your clients and what the Tigers Workforce Behavioral Profile offers you in terms of client retention. Also, please make sure that you bring out the handout that I gave you labeled Consultant Advantage. It's readily available. And I will be introducing you to Megan Fries in a moment. And Megan, now would be a good time to start our recording. I, I believe you already have, correct? Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay, good very good. So today we want to hold our training to 30 minutes. And I will give you a recorded link by email so you can revisit this training. And we have also scheduled time for questions. And if you see uh, the chat function here on uh on Zoom, you can type your question into the chat as they come up for you, and we can address those questions first if you like. And now I want to introduce you to Megan Fries. Megan developed your documentation handouts and was the team member in charge of our beta testing. And Megan has been a wonderful team member and is the perfect complement to my administrative thinking style. And I really value Megan highly, so I'm glad you get to meet her today. She's an exceptional person. So Megan, I'd like to turn the training over to you now. Thanks, Diane. It's nice to meet you both, Barbara and Cheryl, even virtually. Um, so what we're planning to do in the next 30 minutes is an overview of what the system looks like and the most important features. You may have already seen one of the two manuals or both of the manuals that Diane has sent along with the reference material. Um, those are very detailed and we will not be going through on that level of detail today, though we probably will reference them. Um, if you're ever having questions, that's the first place to look because there are a lot of notations to help you. But the system's very intuitive um, and with a few simple tips and tricks, it will be easy for most people to navigate. And today we're really going to go through those tips and tricks. Um, so we'll show you some things that are, um, are relevant to all four package types, the small, the small multi, the large, and the large multi, and some things that are specific to each of those. Um, so to begin, this is the login screen, and we have a couple of test companies which are already set up with some sample data entered. Um, registration is the same, so once you get the screen, you won't have login information, but you will just go to the register button and a screen will pop up, which will give you the options to enter all of your um, profile information, which will be saved for you within the system. So once you've registered, um, you will log in. And when we first log in, let's see if I can make my screen a little bigger, um, you are taken immediately to the dashboard, which shows you an overview of what's been purchased, how many surveys you've set up, members, you've created companies and departments. Um, and this is a little bit crazy because this is one of our test companies, so it's got quite a bit of information already. Um, but you can always return to this dashboard by clicking the Tigers logo at the top. Um, one of the other things to note are the menus along the left-hand side, which also includes sub-menus. So anytime you see this arrow, you can click on the words and it will open up to expand to more details underneath that. So similar with, with all four um, package types, you have the My Account option, which allows you to go in and adjust your uh, profile information. Um, most of the setup is the same, where you'll see very easy to read, save is usually green, uh, delete is red. Um, so you would go in and edit and just save before you exit the screen. You can also change your password, entering your old password and entering your new password and save. And then we get to packages, which are the options for actually purchasing and loading what will be on this back end site. And now Diane will discuss the package options and reference the handout, which I will pull up. Okay, very good. Hey, well, thanks, Megan, that's perfect. Um, what I'd like the, to direct your attention to is the Consultants Advantage handout. You can make notes on that as, as we go through this. So what I'm going to be sharing is uh, 
the different uh, survey assessments, the logic behind it, and some best practices that I've loaded on this sheet for you and for your advantage. So if you would look at the graphic labeled X, and you can see it up there in the upper left-hand corner, this is the one I would like you to look at that you can make notes on. Uh, the Tiger's Workforce Behavioral Profile is set up to provide you with three iteration surveys for the same group. This is the client retention strategy for approximately three years of built-in client assessment for you. Each assessment you acquire provides three survey iterations for you. The first one gives you a good benchmark for your discoveries that shows your client's current behavior state. And from this discovery, you can pinpoint the critical behavior needs from which your strategic workforce development consulting, leadership consulting, coaching, and training plans roll out from. Now, the second survey that you could do, let's say even 18 months after their first survey and the work that you do with them, will measure the level of transference of your work. And it gives you a comparison between the first and second assessments. And then it also shows your, you your client's next potential steps so that you can continue, continue to grow with them in a way that makes most sense for that unique client. And um, I also recommend that you have a conversation with your clients regarding tracking uh, cost savings or productivity improvements in the company because this will show your client the actual ROI of the great decision that they made working with you. Um, and so then the third assessment, again, you could do this uh, 18 months, a year, six months after uh, your second intervention. It again will show you comparisons between the first, second, and third surveys, as well as any new recommendations that might come forward. So when I developed these packages, I wanted to give you ultimate flexibility in pricing. And so here's a few things you need to know in running a survey. First, you have to have a minimum of eight employees to run a survey. This is the number where individual responses are protected and insulated um, against retaliation, let's say, from uh, a department manager who doesn't want to be exposed for um, their leadership style, for example. Um, we won't run a survey or even a department without eight people in it. The system is set up to reject it. So if you look at the, on the far left of the screen here, small company or department assessment, minimum size is eight people, maximum size is around 200, you know, give or take. And uh, you get th three survey runs for one group and, um, and this, assessment will either give you a company-wide survey. Let's say you have a company with 12 employees. That's essentially all they need is just a good company profile. Now, when you start getting larger, perhaps, you know, in that 200 employee range, they have three or four, maybe even five departments. So, if you, uh, the, the cost of a small company survey that has three iterations in it is $350. When you start getting up into the five small company surveys, I've given you a, a cost break on the five. When you get into the company-wide assessments broken into departments, we get into the $3,500 category. So you can do the math. If there's, uh, if there is an example, a company that has four departments, you might just want to pick up the five small company surveys and run a department survey for the departments you want to run and a company-wide survey that gives you all the information that you need. And these will show up as separate reports. 
The large company survey, um, it is set up to build your departments right into it. And my recommendation is in any of these surveys that your clients give you the email information for the people that they're sending the, pe the survey out to. Because this gives you, this saves you time, number one, if you have to hand uh, uh, put input all this information, then you will definitely um, find that it's time consuming and you need to charge for that. But we have set up this system so that you can import it directly from a spreadsheet. One click and you're done, as long as it looks like this. And Megan's going to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but what we recommend is you always keep this first line set up so that it imports without any problems for you. And then if you look at the graph labeled Z, as in zebra, I, this is a field that shows you exactly what your discoveries, when you input them into the survey, how it shows up in the survey report. So um, I want you to take a look uh, in your handout and study each one of these questions because how you answer them is exactly how it's going to come out in the survey. And it's good from a best practice standpoint to be asking these questions anyway uh, before you even submit a proposal to your client so that you know exactly uh, what their strengths are, uh, the, the issues that they want to resolve, and uh, your report will uh, either will give them the additional information to know how to strategically focus your training, consulting, leadership development, and consulting into um, a real betterment uh, for their organizations. So now Megan is going to show you um, the companies and departments and how to set this up in the back office. So Megan, I'm going to pass this back to you. Okay, thanks, Diane. Um, so just to pick up on this very last um, sheet the, of this little infographic, this shows you uh, in a concise way those different steps that are involved, and it's a little cheat sheet and overview of what has to happen. Um, when we go back to entering the survey, you're going to see that it follows along in a very linear pattern, and all of the fields do have to be entered. Um, you have to enter something, so um, so we recommend that you go from the top down so that you don't uh, exclude something and then run into issues with something not functioning. So what we'll be showing you is how to add companies, departments, subsets, and members. Um, and you do have to enter something for every category because you want the ability to use the larger surveys um, and the smaller surveys at different times. Um, if you can see from the dashboard, you know, ideally you might have different, uh, different size companies that you're working with, so different surveys might be necessary, and using all of the fields helps you to filter and find things. Um, and we've got some best practices that are set up uh, for the different situations, um, and you'll only really notice where they differ on the actual survey and then in the reporting, which we'll see today. It will become very clear once we get to that portion. So to begin, the first thing that you'll want to do after you've set up your package is to um, enter companies. So you will open the companies and then the submenu for companies. And you can see all of these screens, when you first click on them, are a general overview of what has been entered. Uh, to select a new one, you will just open new and then type in your new name and save. To edit and delete, uh, it's very easy, very intuitive. You can see how this is going to go for most of it. You would just click the button next to the one you want to delete or edit and then go in and do so. And make sure that you save before you leave this area. For departments, the best practice suggestion, we use departments for the larger reporting, but for small companies, we suggest um, that you uh, that you use the company name for the department name so that you can keep things straight because you do have to enter something here. 
Um, same way you select new, create or select the company that you've already entered and then add your department name. So you can see you do have to have a company in there before you can, you can add the department. The rest of the features are exactly the same. You can edit and delete from the same um, segment. So then we're going to go to our members section and members are the actual survey participants. So all of the employees or team members that you'll be sending the survey to. So when you open members, you see that we have um, subsets. Subsets are something that we use for the smaller group survey to make it easier to, uh, to identify the, the correct members. Um, you will select new and then enter the name of the subset. Um, as a best practice um, for the large and the multi packages, we suggest that you enter the same thing for subset as you would for your department. So in a similar fashion, you want to have the ability to use them if you're using the bigger packages, so you have to enter something for the smaller. Um, so once you've entered your subset, then you can add your members. And members, you can think of this as a holding area, which is basically a database for all of the different people. These are all test people that we've entered already. Um, when you're actually entering them, we have two options. You can enter them individually, which gives you the screen, and you enter your unique information. Um, and then you have to select your subset and your company and your department. So if you've not created one of these things, you will get an error message that says that that needs to be done. Um, so you would enter all of this in information and then save. But the most efficient way that we have to add members is actually through the import, which Diane also already mentioned. Uh, when you download the sample Excel file, it opens in a new screen, and depending on your system, mine is going to open in a Google Sheets, but you can very easily download it to an Excel file. Um, but the most important feature of this is that the first row must stay as it is. Um, and then we have some sample information in here, and you wanna make sure that you replace that with your uh, member information from your clients. Uh, for subset, for company, for department, you want to make sure that you also don't have any extra spaces uh, or, or characters that might be different from what you actually entered on the back end of the website. You will also get some error messages if that occurs. So this is something that could be saved on your computer and uh, that you can have on hand even before you deliver your proposal so that you can be getting things ready. Sometimes it takes some time to collect the member information. So, um, so once you have that saved, you browse to find that file on your computer and you basically upload. And all of the, the people that are on that CSV can be uploaded at the exact same time. You can always check those members by looking at your member screen and then filtering your search function for the specific company, subset, or department. So now Diane is going to touch a little bit more upon emailing the team members. Thanks, Megan. Uh, we have acquired a whitelisted email sender. Uh, it was the best we could find. But what we have discovered is that when bulk emails are sent from the system, Microsoft email clients like Gmail, Live.com, and Hotmail consider it spam, no matter how whitelisted the email sender is. So this is something to be aware of. Um, and it's important, uh, one best practice is to have your client send an announcement to their employees to whitelist the email address admin at tigersuccessseries.com. That little step there will um, allow email to get through the most vigorous systems. And this is the email address that will come with the link for the employees to take the survey. And it's also important for your client to tell their employees that a third party is compiling the results and shall not disclose individual employee responses. The system only compiles a group response. And the only time 
that an individual employee is isolated is if they have not completed the survey. And the purpose of this is to re-invite them to take the survey. Perhaps they were on vacation. Perhaps it went into spam. Also, our survey system sends no additional email to these employees ever. No marketing, no spam. The only thing they get is a survey link. So when your client notifies their employees like this ahead of time, you will not have as many reinvites to send out. And you also won't have to report which employees are ignoring the survey. And the last tip I want to share with you uh, that will not be able to uh, is that you won't be able to see the survey results until 60% of the surveys are completed. Again, you know, if only two people, and that is 10% of, uh, of your survey pool respond, it would probably be easy to see results and isolate people. We wanted to avoid that. So we're looking at 60% of the surveys um, is actually when you can be able to see what the reports are starting to, to look like. So now Megan is going to show you how to create a survey. Okay, so Back now we'll go to the last section down here, which is surveys. And we're going to go through the process of setting up a new survey and then for reporting review some of the ones that we have uh, pre-entered some information into. So um, for all of the surveys, you'll enter a survey, survey title. So I'm just going to make something up for today. So test for 30. And let's just say test A. Um, once you enter this information, um, and it shows you in the manual, all of these things will be visible to your client. So you do want them to be something that you're okay with people seeing. Um, and every single section that is that does appear to members uh, is, is very clearly marked uh, in the manual for each one. So now you can see here that we have a big differentiation between the small and small multi, which is subset, and the large and large multi, which is company. And once we click on these buttons, you can see for company, you have a company selection down here. Once I change this to our subset, you can now see that now subsets are only available. So this is the, the, the main reason why you have to enter something for each of these fields as we're going through. So we're just going to create a small multi and we'll just pick one of the ones that we have here. Um, all of these things will have been created ahead of time. Um, that with the survey theme, there, this is a good way that you can uh, distinguish either between different uh, departments that you're testing and measuring or different companies or try to stick within the branding. There's quite a few different options here. You can see, um, you can add the logo for the, the particular company or you can add your logo to this area which appears on the survey. For the survey detail, um, you can enter extra notes that you want to be visible for members when they open the survey. So I'll just put extra notes. The invitation message, this is the email that is presented to the members when they get the link. And we have pre-filled this with um, some sample data which can be used. Um, there's a couple areas which you can adjust. Anything within brackets is actually going to pull from data that's from the database. So in this case, it would say, hi, Megan, for my particular entry. Um, you can adjust this just by typing. Uh, you can add different features. There's a, a world of, of ways that you can add more information here. Uh, the one thing that you have to be sure of is not to adjust the link section. This is where they will get their personal link to take the survey. And the survey admin does not have access to whose link belongs to whom. So the only way to um, to fix that is to re-invite or resend a message if something does um, go wonky with that. The re-invite message, um, just as Diane was saying, is in case you know someone could not find the survey or it went to spam, um, it might just be another way to remind a busy person that they still need to complete it. We include some best practices three to five days after the initial survey is sent out. 
How frequently do subset or team members meet face-to-face -face or through webcast? So these questions down here um, are about the team, which Diane was referring to before from the consultant's uh, PDF that we sent out. Um, so you can see that this is where you answer all of those things or, or all of the things you know about a company um, so that you will have it available on the report once people are done. And then once you have entered everything, we'll just enter some fake data. Then we're just going to click save. And now you have your survey. One of the most important things is to note that that does not actually send your survey to anyone. Um, you actually have to go through the next steps to make sure that this happens. So once we have added our survey, we're actually going to switch over to one of the pre-populated ones so that you can see some of the data. Um, or actually, no, we'll go through first and, and add the iterations. So now that you've gotten your survey here, if you come back, this is the screen you would get from your survey dashboard. We're going to manage the iterations. And this is how you would add those three iteration that Diane was mentioning. So here, because we've not sent any iterations, we have this nice reminder right in the middle of the screen to add an iteration. And this is where you would actually set up the first of the three. You add each one in the exact same manner. You enter a start date, you enter an end date. You wanna make sure you give it some time, perhaps find out what the best practices are, what you can expect from the members. And then from the information that you've entered from your survey, you can see I've only actually have two people that fit within the subset in the company that I have created. So obviously this would not allow me to send the survey, but just for these purposes, I will go ahead and add these two members and save. So select the minimum of eight members. So we can't actually even create a survey for this particular parameter because we did not enter enough members that were in the right subset within the right department. So there are some fail safes to ensure that the eight person or 60% is created. Now I'll just switch over to one of the surveys that we already have populated with iterations. Um, and from here that you can see, so we have created these three iterations. With everything that happens after this, we use the please select button. So once you click this, you'll see that we've got a number of things going on over here. Once we've added the members to the iteration, you have the ability to send the invitation email. This action alone is what sends out the survey. So once that has been pressed, everything goes out. And you can see from this dashboard that we've already sent these surveys. So this is an overview. It shows us when it was created, when it when the, the start date of the iteration, when was the end date of the iteration, how many emails have gone out. So the first time that you go to please select and send invitation email, you'll see an email count of one. You can see the total users. You can see how many of the users have completed it, how many have opened it but not yet um, finished it, and then also how many have not started. So um, from here, we're going to have a short break to see if there's any questions. We do only have about nine minutes left. Um, so we want to make sure that we get your questions answered succinctly and then move on to show you the reporting. We have done the bulk of this though. So at this point, do we have any questions? Let's see, let's unmute them. Unmute. I think we must not. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, there's, I don't have, this is Cheryl, I don't have any questions. It seems pretty straightforward, kind of nice. Perfect. All right, so now, uh, if we don't have any questions, then Diane, um, we're gonna talk about the on-screen graph and the report for small packages. So no, I don't have any questions at the moment. Okay. Perfect. 
And we do have about eight minutes, Diane. Okay. Um, one of the part of your graphs in the reporting side of the, the assessment, um, I set it up with a variety of different ways to look at the information. There is the way to that actually appears in the report, report where you can see uh, right under the word reporting is iteration report, and then various graphs. I'm a bar chart per person, but that doesn't mean your clients are bar, bar chart persons. So I put, we put in there a variety of different ways to view the information visually um, that you can just copy the screen, put into your reports, uh, use in uh, at, you know a conversation with your uh, with your clients um, not everybody thinks the same not everybody looks at information the same one of my clients really resonated with the pie charts it made perfect sense to him so I created this flexibility again for your convenience in communicating visual information uh, to your clients so I think I, that's all I really want to say about that. I'm going to hand it back to you, Megan. Okay, great. So with this on-screen um, graph option, this is available for both the small and the large, but we did want to make sure we show you the difference in the main reports. So this is a small survey that's been preloaded, um, and we just collect, uh, select the iteration report from that same blue button. So you get to this the same way with managing iterations. And for the small survey, because there's only one report for each iteration, it will automatically load into a new window. And you can see here, um, this was uh, some of the information that was um, just as an overview. You have the options to skip down in the screen to the different sections, and then you also have the option to download the PDF, which is probably the best way to save and transfer reports. Um, this is what was also in your, um, your uh, consultant's advantage handout. This is the information that was entered in that survey area. And now you have it right in front of you as you're viewing the report results. Um, so that should help a little bit in understanding if your assumptions were accurate or not. Um, now I'm gonna switch back to the large survey. So this is the large and the large multi. You can see we've had, we have three iterations. And just as a reminder, this is, you can get to this by going to surveys and then managing your iterations. Once you have that, the eight people or the 60% of the total, you have the options to view these other reports. So here, when we select iteration report, with the large survey, they populate at the bottom. We have several other options. You can see that we have two different departments that were set up. So we can view the department for this specific iteration, how they responded. We can review all departments together which shows a separation of HR and operations. And then you can also view the company as a whole. Um, so there, you get a lot more functionality with segmenting groups um, with this large and large multi package. Um, and this really concludes the, the run through of the survey setup and the administration. Um, so if we have any other questions or if there's anything else you want to add, Diane? Well, I, uh... I would like to say that uh, the, the importance of the big, uh, the big survey is that it will break down, like Megan said, into the various departments. So those of you are, who are leadership coaching as well, one-on-one, -on -one, um, will find opportunities there. If a department is suffering, it could be that that leader is suffering and as a result would really benefit from your coaching. So uh, are there any other questions that we could address at this point before we close the training? No. Looks good. Yeah. Barbara, how about you? No, no, not at the moment. Um, I suppose it's when I get in there and start doing it, that's when <laughs> I might have the questions so right well, now. It and it's pretty straightforward from running online. Um, oh, 
Okay. And, well, and I want to mention too that Megan will be on hand. If you go back to the, cult, the consultants advantage sheet over on the right hand side, we've added some uh, some uh, some different um, looking at X. <laughs> Megan, if you if you go up to X, you go. could see that we. Uh, that we are adding IT support is optional. Mm -hmm. You can buy this for one assessment and Megan will walk you through it. And there is also a very detailed manual which you may already have. Um, That's, that will help. Yes, and we'll have this video available uh, for rewatching as well so you can right. get another view once it makes a little bit more sense once you get in there. Right, right. and okay. then the same here. I mean, if you want to work with me on a coaching review, of the findings, I'm fine with that too. Those are additional prices, but at $350 for uh, three surveys <laughs> for the same group, I've also made that very affordable. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, because again, the whole idea of this is that this is a service you provide to your clients that you can wrap your fees over. And mm. um, as a result, we want to make this cost effective for consultants and trainers and coaches using this service. Okay. So, and, and the larger, the larger company instead of 2000, that would be, um, what did you say was that price point? That one is 3,500. 3,500. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so you could do the math, Barbara, between getting, you know, five small company surveys if the company is, let's say, 250 people or 300 people. Um, you can do the math. I set it up so that the, you can get the best cost advantage. Okay. Right. right. Those are great questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really appreciate them. So, so what you're saying is that I can, you can have several clients as long as they don't go beyond 200? Oh no, you can have several oh, no. clients and it goes beyond 2000. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, and the, the area where entering the specific department and subset and really segmenting them is that's where you see the most value. If you only have one company, it's pretty easy, but um, once you've got multiple companies and hundreds or thousands of people in the database, it's extremely helpful to be able to filter them down and very easy. So, okay. We've got right, one it's... minute left. Okay. okay. So it seems straightforward at the moment. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to, I really want to thank you for, for coming today and for your time and attention. Um, in a brief summary, the company wide reports give you the reliable work culture behavior information for your co clients' culture change initi initiatives. The department sur surveys show you which leaders would benefit from coaching and leadership development, consulting, and training. And also, if you want, um, I want to mention that if you want your client employees to receive 52 weeks of micro training on top of this assessment so that you can do the consulting work and move the whole company forward in, in very financially beneficial ways to them, that's an option that we can talk about later as well. And, I, and it just give me a phone call or send me an email and we can talk about that. Okay. So call me, email me if you have any questions and for now, um, I'll talk with you later, and I am so grateful that you joined us today. It was, it was nice to meet you both. Thank you, thank you both. <laughs> thank you, Megan. Thank you, Diane. And thank you.